for a reason. He's not wired to be that way naturally. But through something that happened, through a breach on the relationship, it caused him to be silent. And I'm not saying it's your fault, but I'm saying it could be. We've got to get to the place where we can communicate. I read a story about a man who was lonely, and he tried to get a dog, but he wasn't home enough to keep the dog. He tried to get a cat. He was allergic to the cat. Tried to get the bird, and the bird went quack, quack, and talked too much and everything else. That's the duck, but whatever. So he bought a very expensive exotic fish that had to be in a regulated climate. He bought the tank and set it by his bed, and he, and he would lay it in bed and talk to his fish. And found companionship because he just needed somebody to talk to. He didn't need someone to talk back to. He just needed someone to listen to his problems. He didn't need someone to say, you know, I, I'm thankful that you took the kids to practice, but you should have taken out the trash first. He just needed someone, and when he'd come home at the end of the day, he could say, honey, how was your day? And, and could, he could pour out the, the very intents of his heart, and she could hold those things in and not use them against him when he, he, when he was most vulnerable and most weak and not profit from his weakness. He just needed someone that could be a friend. He just needed someone that could understand his pain and not put any type of obligation on him. He had to feel like he had to have an S on his chest like Superman and had to be strong all the time. And he needed someone that made room for weakness and made room for mistakes and made room for failures and didn't put him on such a high block and such a high standard to the point that if he ever messed up he felt like he could never reveal it he just needed a friend so he got a fish and he said through the night as he was sleeping the thermostat broke up and it messed all up and the water began to get hot and hot and hotter and hotter and when he woke up the next morning the fish had been boiled to death it was swollen its eyes were all messed up it was a horrible situation, and he cried because this was the only person in his world that knew all about him. And he was completed by this, and the fish never said nothing to him. If the fish was talking to him, we may need to pray for him. But the fish died, and he asked himself the question, through the night, was the fish screaming for help when I couldn't hear him? And women, if I be honest with you today, there are some men in your life that are screaming for help, and you may not hear them. And the reason they are screaming for help is because their climate keeps getting hotter and hotter and hotter, and more pressure is placed on them, and their life is a pressure cooker, and they're screaming for help, but they're screaming on a frequency that you can't hear. And is the thing you care about in your life boiling to death under pressure? under the heat and the strain of life and you don't even know it because the victim mentality says it's all about me it's all about me what are the men in your life saying chances are you probably can't say too much because they're not talking and the reason they're not talking because they don't feel comfortable. They can talk about certain things, but what do you know really about their heart? Can you describe your husband's dreams? Can you describe his ambitions and the things he desires to accomplish? Do you know intimately his weaknesses, but at the same time know all of his strengths? It's so easy to focus on the negatives that we forget about the positives. He may not be the man that you want him to be, but all men are. We are simply potential wrapped up in manhood. And we're looking for someone that can help us discover our potential and coach us through being a help meet. The Bible describes you as a help meet. What does that mean? It did not say help mate. It said help meet. Your job is to help meet us halfway, to help meet us when we are down and say, let's get up, to help meet us through failure and say, I know success is somewhere on the horizon, baby. Just keep trying to help meet us in times when we're fearful, to help meet us. And we are so programmed men. What happened when we were riding the bike as a kid and we fell down and cut our knee and we come running to daddy and we're crying and he got down on his knee and said, big boys, don't cry. It's all right. And they bred men that we can't show emotion. 
So when we're intimidated and we're fearful, we can't let anyone see that. Anything, our wife can't see that. And through the process, we're screaming internally, and they can't hear us. And no one can help us but our help meet. And many times, she don't even know it. Is this real today? I know it's serious, but the subject's serious. I've delivered most of my heart to you today. It's a subject we could keep going on. But inevitably, the only way things can be rectified and reconciliation can be brought. First step to any program of recovery will teach you, first, admit the weakness. Scriptural way to look at it. The Bible says to say into the mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. In other words, you first have to admit there is a mountain. Can you admit it today and say, well, some of those, maybe not all, but some of those things are in me. I might be making it a little hard on, on my husband. I may have a little bit of that mama mentality where I'm just trying to, I'm trying to keep little Junior little. Mama, if you don't let little Junior grow up, taste his own bitterness, he's going to turn into wild willy when he gets old. Are you allowing your husband to be incubated through a process to make him greater than he is, he can find his own greatness? Or are you continually demasculating and knocking him down and manipulating him? Are you saying all the right things to your husband, but your heart is wrong? Victim mentality. Will you stand with me today? I appreciate you allowing me to be so honest, and I can tell you listening because we didn't have anybody moving or talking or taking notes or passing gum today. I appreciate that so much. But more than that, I believe God has called us to a place where we live a life better than we ever had before. And how can we do that? When we come in here and think we can just shout about change and talk about change. Can I give you something revolutionary? Along the same subject. Change is not change until it's changed. We can talk about change, preach about change, but until we can get some change to actually happen, we're never going to change. We can talk about God restoring the family and, and His Spirit being poured out in these last days, but unless there's real change, it's never going to happen. And I want to be honest with you today, like I am every day, for, if it's for no other reason, and the fact that I believe God is calling us to change. And sometimes change is difficult. It's easy to change and think that you could go from poverty to being a millionaire. That's a great change. But what about the most negative aspects of your character that many times people don't even know? Can you change those things? Can you change your thought process and the pattern that you've used for years? Can you change that? I'm a firm believer that big doors swing on small hinges. In other words, it's the little things in your life that causes big things to move and big things to be opened up for you. What does that mean? If you get your heart right, if you have some integrity in your business, if you get to the place that your attitude doesn't fluctuate and flare and you're not so controlled by your emotions, that you can have healthy relationships, you can create a healthy environment, you can diffuse problems, you don't just present problems, but you give answers. If you could change the little things, the little foxes spoil the vine. It's a small thing. I'm not talking about you getting to the place where God speaks to you to give a, something a major, large, or to do something major. I'm not talking about changing your whole life and selling your house and car and moving in, in, to India or Africa and being a mission. I'm not talking about huge change. I'm talking about the little things that people don't even see. Because when we can get those things in line and in order, we're going to see some big things change. With every head bowed today, if something that I said on any level, male or female, whatever walk of life you're in, if it meant something to you today, will you simply just raise your hand? You just put it up for a second. God, I'm thankful for the hands that were raised today. And God, as we raise our hands and surrender to you, will you please give us the power to change what we feel powerless to change? Will you please get us to the place, God, 
that we could be the man or woman we need to be. We can be the person we need to be. And Father, help us to realize it's not